Let us see how sexual reproduction occurs in Anthocerous. The species of Anthocerous are both monoecious and dioecious. That is, they are homothallic and some of them are heterothallic. In homothallic species, both the male and the female sex organs are seen on the same thallic. Whereas in heterothallic species, the male and the female sex organs are found on different thallic. Some of the examples of homothallic species are Anthocerous fusiformis, Anthocerous punctatus. The heterothallic species are Anthocerous himalayensis, and Anthocerous halle. If Anthocerous species are monoecious, then we see a condition called as protandrous condition, where the anthridium matures first. If the anthridium matures first, then uh, there is inhibition or the anthridium is not in a position or the anthrozoids are not in a position to fertilize the egg formed on the same thallic. That is why homothallic species are protandrous in nature. Both the male and the female sex organs are seen on the dorsal surface of the thallus. When we take a vertical section of the thallus, we find the male sex organs and the female sex organs on the same thallic in a homothallic species. The anthridia develops inside the chambers called as anthridial chambers which are mucilaginous in nature. Inside the anthridial chamber the anthridia can occur as single anthridium or as groups of anthridium. And the archegonia is seen the venter of the archegonia is seen embedded inside the tissue, the neck very close to the epidermis and the cover cells of the archegonia slightly protruding out towards the epidermis, outside the epidermis. The archegonia contains the egg cell, the venter canal cell and the neck canal cells. Whereas the anthridial chamber contains the anthridium. Both the sex organs are seen on the same thallus towards the dorsal surface and very close to the growing region. Now first let us see how the anthridium develops inside the anthridial chamber. How the chamber develops and how the anthridium develops inside the chamber. One of the cells slightly below the epidermis is identified as an anthridial initial. This is an anthridial initial which develops the anthridial chamber and also the anthridium. This anthridial initial, I am drawing it here. The anthridial initial first divides by a transverse wall, resulting in the formation of two cells. The upper cell is called as the roof initial and the lower cell remains as an anthridial initial. After the formation of the two cells, a small gap appears between the two cells. The upper cell and the lower cell are separated by a small space created between the two cells. This space slowly increases in its size and pushes both the cells away from one another. The roof cell is moved towards the upper epidermis whereas the anthridial cell goes down deeper into the tissue. The roof cell now divides by a periclinal division resulting in the formation of two cells. That is this roof cell will divide like this forming two cells. Division which occurs parallel to the axis of the cell is called as a periclinal division. So after the 
periclinal division in the root cell two cells are formed which are arranged one above the other these cells after the periclinal division they start dividing anticlinally and increase in number this anticlinal division results in the formation of two layered roof wall this is the roof wall which is two layered multicellular arranged in two layers the anthridial cell which is at the bottom of the chamber divides to form a single anthridium it completely develops into a single anthridium or sometimes in certain species this divides vertically two or three times forming two to three cells each cell will develop into an anthridium that is how we find either a single anthridium inside the anthridial chamber or a group of anthridium inside the chamber if it is a group of anthridium the anthridia are different stages of development that is some anthridia are fully grown some anthridia are mature some of them are still developing so these anthridia if they occur in clusters they are at different stages of development now how does this anthridium grow from this cell a single cell develops into a anthridium if we see the structure of the anthridia the anthridium has a slender stalk which is multicellular elongated and it has a pouch like body which is covered by outer wall called as the jacket of the anthridium and inside the jacket we find large number of cells which are called as the androcytes these androcytes later metamorphize into anthrozoites now this complex structure that is the stalk and the club shaped body this whole anthridium develops from a single cell which is at the bottom of the chamber now how does this cell develop into the anthridia i'm drawing one of this cell here the anthridial cell divides by two vertical walls at right angles to one another when they divide by two vertical walls that is one vertical wall will result in the formation of two cells another vertical wall at right angles to the first one will result in the formation of four cells after two vertical divisions four cells are formed another transverse division occurs and this results in the formation of eight cells 1 2 3 4 and another four on the other tier that means all the eight cells are arranged in two tiers 1 2 3 4, 4 cells on the upper tier 1 2 3 4, 4 cells on the lower tier the cells of lower tier all the four cells of lower tier develop into the stalk of the anthridia they divide a number of times and form the stalk of the anthridium whereas the four cells on the upper tier they divide once again to form eight cells at this eight cell stage all the cells all the eight cells divide periclinally forming eight cells towards the outside eight cells towards inside the eight cells on the outer side they form the jacket and the eight cells inside form the androgonial mass they form the jacket layer on the outside and the androgonial mass on the inside these androgonial cells divide a number of times forming the androcytes each androcyte is a cuboidal cell which metamorphoses into biflagellate anthrozoid at maturity 
when the anthrazoids are ready for release the epidermis ruptures the anthridial chamber walls they rupture they disintegrate this disintegrates and the jacket of the anthridium also disintegrates as water enters into the chamber the jacket disintegrates and all the anthrazoids are released into the external environment they swim in water and they reach the egg for the process of fertilization now we'll see how the archegonia develops on the dorsal surface the development of archegonia is similar the stages of development are similar as we have seen in marchensia so the same thing can be um, explained here you can refer to the development of archegonia in marchensia because the developmental stages are similar 